In a 250 million market cap, it, it's not insignificant, right? You have 40 million cash in the bank, it, it's great. But at what point do you, does this inflection point kind of kick in? What are investors looking for going forward? Maybe I haven't mentioned it, but uh, pretty well known Cordero is one of the largest silver projects in the world. It's actually fourth largest in the world by just silver alone. But it needs to be the largest economic silver project in the correct, world, right? Correct. Hello and welcome to Crux Investor. First of all, thanks so much for watching this video. If you like it, do give us a thumbs up. That just helps us to understand which companies we should be spending our time, money and effort on. You can also leave a, a comment below uh, to help us understand sort of the questions that you think we should be asking, how you think we're doing, and of course, what you think of the company. You can also catch this as a podcast, uh, read about it as an article or a transcript on cruxinvestor.com. And of course, uh, for our Crux Club members, you get early access to this video. And if you haven't already done so please click the button in the corner of the screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And of course, for more videos like this, click the notification bell. We spoke earlier today to Taj Singh. He is the CEO of Discovery Metals. They're part of the Oxygen Group. We like all things uh, about the Oxygen Group, and this one is no different. Market cap, about 250 million. Share price, as high as it's ever been. They are after silver in Mexico. We talked to Taj about his business model, how they've had to change and adapt things to focus on a high-grade core um, to allow them to kind of advance things. They've got a lot of money in the bank, got 40 million. They've just taken some money from Eric Spot, who's one of their largest shareholders at over 24% now. So lots of quite interesting topics discussed with Taj. Uh, like I say, fascinating company, fascinating group. Take a look in the description below at some of the things we discuss, anything interesting in particular. Click on the number beside that topic, it's a timestamp, and that'll jump you to that part of the video. Otherwise, enjoy everything that Taj has to say. Taj, how are you doing, sir? Pretty good. Uh, yeah. Thanks for having us. No, that's no, good. We we, uh, we like the oxygen group, so we, we like uh, getting their their uh, companies on here. So we we've had uh, Darren Darren LeBrand's of Pure Gold on recently. Great story, going gangbusters. Liberty doing quite well, and apparently you're yep. not doing too bad either. <laughs> We're doing okay, getting some picking up some steam. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Hey, well, look, um, why don't we kick off with the one minute overview of the story, and then we can pick it up from there. Perfect. So we're Discovery Metals, um, focused on silver, focused in Mexico. Um, our flagship project is the Cordero project, uh, which is located in Chihuahua State. Um, it's currently at the drill slash resource slash PEA stage. Um, we're very well funded with over $40 million in the bank. And our goal is pretty simple, is to drill and drill and drill and uh, show a project that was once considered a very big bulk tonnage lower grade project. We want to show it as a project that works at current silver price, but has huge leverage uh, as, as, as silver really, uh, if and when silver starts moving. And, uh, and that's the focus, our flagship project. Uh, we're part of the Oxygen Capital Group, along with, as you said, Liberty and Pure Gold and Sun Metals. And uh, our, our focus is on data. Our focus is on, we're from a lot of wins in the auction uh, company over the years has been taking an asset um, that previous operators had and sometimes it's the second or third or fourth operator that really gets the asset and so this had a lot of data we think it's a world-class asset at Cordero and um, pretty clean simple story uh, deliver a resource and a PAA that shows a very strong project at current silver prices. Beautiful thanks Tash. Um, let's talk about that you, you, got, you like data and I like that you like data but your statement that the, it sometimes takes the third or fourth owner to make it work, it, it doesn't necessarily hold up. So what data did you have originally? What did you set out to do? As I always start off with companies that I've not spoken to before, trying to understand the mentality of the management team, what it is that they're capable of doing, you know, what the business plan is. If, in fact, sometimes, even if there is a, if there is a business plan, because most people kind of just set out to drill some stuff and hopefully, hopefully the commodity prices will like, take care of them. So you inherited a project which people didn't like by the sounds of it so what did you see in it well actually at, at one point in the early discovery days of cordero um it was it was it was considered a um, you know kind of a, a really new brand new find at levon at one point the company we acquired at a 400 million market cap that silver started really moving as they had the discovery but over the years um silver price dropped and they kind of their vision for the project the, the previous operators was this is a big bulk tonnage, Penasquito style. They were going for tonnage. Uh, when we, we acquired this last summer, summer of 2019, when we did our due diligence leading up to this, we liked that they had lots of data. Almost 300 holes were already done. 
130,000 meters plus of drilling had been done. But we looked at it in a different way. And that is, we weren't going to wait for silver to go to 20, 23. We wanted to, a project that worked at 17 or 18. So was there a high grade core that would work at silver price, current silver prices? And the answer to that, and then we'll hopefully to continue to keep proving it is yes, there's a project there with significantly higher grade than that big bulk tonnage that everyone else, the big bulk tonnage project that everyone else saw. And and that's what we're trying to show. We're trying to we're trying to bring the thesis to life. Let me see if I understand that because you know you you didn't necessarily know if you could find that high grade core and be able to start off on that. So how did what did you do? You allocate a certain budget, say like we'll spend this amount if we can. It works. If it doesn't, we'll pack it in. I mean, what was the thinking at board level? We had done so, several months of due diligence on the project, and uh, just to give you some round numbers, it's it was about a billion tons at a fifteen gram per ton silver equivalent cutoff, of you know quite a bit lower cutoff. Um, you had over a billion tons, and you had about a billion and a half silver equivalent uh, ounces in all categories. And we had the data, so we worked on it, and, and we looked for that core, as I was telling you. About. Now, the, the the thing about the project is, it's such it was such a big project, had such a big footprint that there was areas in the resource that needed to be filled in, that needed more dr drilling. And we, our hypothesis was, as you drill it, the grade is going to start coming. The project's going to get tighter, higher grade. Um, also, additionally, the resource model they used was a grade model. We we're going to use geological constraints, structural constraints, you know, a lot more kind of a, a robust model. Um, and and that's, the, that's the kind of scope we want to apply to it. Again, like they, they wanted a big bulk tonnage, a grade model work. But we were really looking for a project um, that we could we could hang our hat on it at, at you know, $17, $18 over. Right. So you're, you're currently at PEA stage, right? So how quickly you talked about right we're going to find this high, high grade core that kind of gets us to the point where we can economically mine quickly phase one and then i guess there'll be a phase two which once money's flowing you can start you know processing the lower grade stuff i mean is, is that i kind of assume that's the the model that you're going with is that right well basic so yeah sort of and I, i'll just add a little color to that within that billion tons i talked about billion and a half silver uh, silver equivalent ounces at the 15 gram per ton cutoff we looked at 50 gram per ton cutoff. At a 50 gram per ton cutoff, you have close to about 200 million tons in both categories. Your grade goes from being about 40, 50 gram per ton silver equivalent to 110, 115 gram per ton silver equivalent. Good strip, good strip ratio. Uh, again, drilling will continue to, to, to hopefully bring that to light and, and add a lot more clarity on that. But that's the project we're focusing on. The silver equivalent kind of cutoff grade at 50 gram per ton and some kind of subset of that couple hundred million tons. And that project that we want to we want to you know bring to life, as I say, can be a project on its own. Uh, and it's it doesn't need the bigger project to, to stand on its own. Now, if silver takes a run, you've got a lot more. You can bring in the the, the lower margin ounces as you're still going to make money. But that project that we're trying to to show doesn't need a higher silver price. We want it to work at this silver price, and it can stand alone on its own. It could be a starter to a huge, huge, huge project. Um, if you will, but we want it to also be able to be a project on its own. Okay, I get, I get that. I, what I'm trying to get is a sort of sense of the timing that you're aiming, you're aiming for. Because if I look at some models that companies employ, if you look at like a Great Bear, okay, it's just drilling, 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 building out resource, hitting high grade after high grade. And, and you know, the question being asked is when are you ever going to produce a resource? When are you actually going to start planning to get this stuff out of the ground? And at the moment, that model's working for them. And then the converse of that, you look at someone like Rocks Gold in, I know we're talking about gold here, but the model is still applicable in Africa where they had a very small resource and they thought, well, we'll get into production real early, get some cash flowing, and that will finance our, the development of other assets, which, you know, we've got and maybe help us with some M&As. And, you know, that, that seems quite polar business plans. They're both good because they've both worked, you know, and there's lots of models where people sort of sat somewhere in the middle hasn't gone anywhere. So, you know, what, what do you, I'm trying to, again, so what's your sense of how you go about monetizing this where, in this sense, I know 250 million market cap, it, it's not insignificant, right? You have 40 million cash in the bank, it's, it's great. Um, but at what point do you, does this inflection point kind of kick in? Where, where do you, where do, what are investors looking for going forward? Well, basically, you talked about the two kind of models, and, and Great Bear is kind of basically a, a brand new discovery, and they haven't put out a resource. Our, 
people already kind of know what to expect with ours, but we want to basically show a new Cordero. We're not just taking it and filling up some holes and, and, and optimizing the, the, the mining and the, the engineering. And we are going to do all of that, but it's a new project. It's going to see way more drilling than was done before. And that's all going to put the story together. Um, but basically, um, basically, you know, we our, our kind of timeline for putting things together is a resource by about this time next year, maybe earlier, and then a PA subsequent to that. And um, in between that, probably every month, like we've been doing since we took this project over, every month putting out drill results that continue to show that we're executing on our plan, to show that there's a high grade core there. And, and we've been able to su successfully do that since we've acquired the project, and we hope we can continue to do that. So catalyst coming out for the next month, drill results, drill results, drill results some more color on metallurgy as we progress. Uh, and then the ultimate goals, as I said, are resource and PA about this time next year. Okay, and you, th and you think in terms of like marching up that development curve, that's gonna be enough and for you or for, the, for you to get the market excited? Yes, I mean, listen, it's, uh, everyone always says that they're undervalued, but we really truly believe um, as this project comes to light, you know, even despite us having a $250 million market cap, that's a fraction of of, of uh, you know, in terms of PNAV, it's, it's, we're still significantly val undervalued, we believe. And I think the market's realizing that. Um, the interesting thing about us is not only do you have the value of the DCF of the, of the, the plan that we're going to put forward, this higher grade scenario, but then also there's a bunch of in situ ounces. What value do they get? Things like that. It becomes interesting because it's very sizable, as I said. Maybe I haven't mentioned it, but, uh, Pretty well known Cordero is one of the largest silver projects in the world. It's actually fourth largest in the world by just silver alone. But it needs to be the largest economic silver project in the world. Right? Correct. Correct. L Correct. Little things. Little things. So so what are you what are you doing on that? What in terms of understanding the the economics? Because I noticed in the presentation you kind of reduced the, uh, the, the 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 cutoff has changed, right? You know, you you, you consciously said, hey, we can do better than this. Yes. And again, it, at this time. When Levon discovered it, it was that was that was uh, you know Penasquito had just sold for a significant uh, for a significant uh, premium uh, prior to that, and that was that was kind of the that was the style of project they were looking for. For us, again, um, we looked at this and said we need a project that works now. Um, and then, like I said, the, the economics are first and foremost for us. Uh, NPV to capex ratio is important. IRR is important. Payback is important. All those things come ahead. Cash management. How are you going to pay for capex? Is it a staged capex? Yes. How are we going to go about showing that? So we think there's going to be huge changes in the resource model for the better, uh, especially in terms of grade. We think the strip we're going to be able to improve within, with, with this drilling we're doing. Um, and then we also believe that there's significant improvements that can be made to the engineering of it. Um, for example, um, you know, in the in their flow sheet, uh, there's no there's an ore sorting step that you can add. Ore sorting will drop your kind of your material by 35, 40 percent your your waste, keeping mo essentially all of your metal and the whole back end of your flow sheets a lot a lot tighter, a lot smaller. Your recoveries could potentially come come up because you you have higher uh, higher head grades. There's these things like that. Mine planning needs to be worked on. So this really isn't just tightening up the project that people are saying. It's going to be a completely new project. Okay. It, it, well, it's, it's kind of interesting. You know, what, what, what you hope to and how the market perceives you are two different things. So, you know, positioning it as a new project is 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 usually quite hard. But you've got the oxygen group behind you, track record behind you, and you got this guy called Eric Sprock just come in behind you. Like, there's all quite helpful things to try and change people's perceptions well you know significantly um so can you just tell me a little bit about the team we 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 know uh Gerno Verber, um he's like quite a classy geologist so but can you talk about maybe him and some of the other team and who, who you've worked with before um and you know delivered value before yeah, so um, my, my, my quick brief uh, bio on me is uh, I've been CEO of Discovery since its inception in, in late 17, late 2017. Um, before that, I was a VP of Corporate Development, VP Engineering at Timmins Gold, which then became Alio and now has got to been acquired by Argonaut Gold. Um, and we were operating a, about 100 to 125,000 ounce per year um, gold heap leach project in Sonora, Mexico. So that was 
I have over over about a decade of experience just specifically working in Mexico on the grounds. And then before that, I was at Macquarie as an analyst uh, covering the junior golds, junior silvers. And prior to that, 10, about, yeah, 10 years at uh, Inco slash Valley as an engineer working up the ranks. Gernard Wilbur, you know very well, he came to us from Cisco Mining. He was their VPX. He was very, uh, very instrumental in the early days of windfall um, and putting that together and, and, and doing the amalgamation that you, you now know as Cisco Mining. Uh, you know, 30, more than 35 years experience all over the world. Uh, fantastic. He's leading the efforts on the ground. Um, and then we've got our CFO, uh, Andres Labe, who uh, comes to us from Tahoe. Previous to that, he was with also working with me at, at Timmins, um, flew in the Spanish, uh, worked in Peru, uh, worked with Gold Corp as well. So significant experience there. And then we've also added just recently as VP Corporate Development, Forbes Gemmo. Uh, who was previously uh, five, five and a half, I think six years at Guyana Goldfields in the same role. And previous to that, he was running a uh, exploration company in Brazil uh, that was sold uh, to an Aussie company. Um, and then prior to that, analyst at Rages. So very good kind of spectrum, broad, broad, broad kind of uh, spectrum of, of skills, this, the, the management team we have. And then the board, you know, um, you know, the founder of, of, of um, of Oxygen and of also Discoveries, Marco Day, who's been uh, instrumental of being on the board, as well as Murray John. Murray John is a very well-known portfolio manager, but also an engineer, mining engineer. But uh, he's, he's he's on the board. We also have Jeff Parv, who's chairman of Kirkland Lake Gold. So we've got a very strong board. Moira Smith, who's a VPX at um, at Liberty Gold, and she's uh, <laughs> got to be one of the smartest geologists in the world. Uh, it's been amazing to have her on too. So it's it's. Fantastic team around us and lots of Mexico experience, lots of Mexico experience. How's your GNA? There's a lot of people there. How do they get remunerated? <laughs> Actually, the, uh, the, the, the last ones I mentioned to you were bored. Um, the, the actual management team is pretty much composed of four uh, people. Myself, Gernot, Forbes, and our CFO, Andres Labbe. We also have a country manager who's based in Mexico. So we actually keep GNA very, uh, we try to keep it very long. Right. Even though you got so much money in the bank, you're you're, you're um, saving it for drilling, are you? <laughs> it's always put it in the ground. Always put it in the ground. Uh, right. Yeah. And people look at that. Investors are smart. You got to you know keep that G and G and E in check. Well, let's 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 talk about that. Let's talk about the type of drilling, okay? Because um, are, are you going to be doing any more exploration, or are you talking about infill and, and trying to just hone in on this high grade zone? I mean, how are you spending that forty million bucks? How's that break down? Yeah, that's a good question. So we've uh, the phase one program uh, was initially announced as 35,000 meters. We've since just recently after this financing up to 55,000 meters, we're about 18,000 meters of the way in. Um, a majority of that will be in around the old Levon resource area. Um, but there's also uh, an, an allotment for new discoveries on the property. And that's something I haven't mentioned yet, but it's, it's a good question you have so I can talk about it. The actual resource area of the, even of the big, big project I'm talking about takes up less than a thousand hectares. We've got 35,000 hectares contiguous and around us and several, you know, it's a very prospective land package, several sniffs of, of hopefully new discoveries, but the previous operators really were focused on the resource area. Like I said, so the, the, the regional to the, to the, to the main resource area scene has seen very limited, um, work right around the pit area. There's also, uh, quite a, uh, you know, quite a few veins we've already found. And these veins are new part of the story, which could be exciting, it's early days, but these are where artisanals used to mine. And they were mining kilo, two kilo silver with some with zinc, lead, gold, and, and direct shipping it to a town nearby called Peral, which is a mining town. And those have never been worked on as veins. They were kind of the previous operator said, whatever fits in the pit is fine, but these are now just looking like they go outside of the pit area and they keep going and we've already traced about five kilometers of strike length uh, that all have to be tested uh, but it's that they could really add a new component of the story that you got the the bulk tonnage project that works again it's current silver prices but now within this system um, this breccia hosted disseminated mineralization there are these high grade veins ripping through it on the fringes of it that could add that could add a completely new component to the story right bringing up mill feed and you don't need many of those tons, four or five million tons of that with those kind of grades. You can add a lot of ounces really quickly. 
But can you do that without getting distracted to the, the, the main cause, which you told me earlier, is you know, let's get a resource out and let's tell people what we've got and how we're going to do it. Yes, no, completely. We've, we're, we're, and listen, it's the, the main focus is putting our, our working on the resource in that PEA, getting that out. And, but these are close to the mine, near mine. They may extend beyond it, um, the veins, and we'll have an, an allotment to test them. And if, if they work, great. They'll probably be included in the resource and P if things work out well. If they need more work, we can work on them later after we put out the study. And same with the regional targets. Those are very early days. That's, that's just going to take time and it's going to take a proper concentrated program of mapping, sampling, reconnaissance so you spend your drill money properly. Okay, so this is not going to, be, going to become a sort of geology fest where you're getting excited <laughs> every day with what, what you're finding. No. The Cordero main area is our base value. That's that's what we have to hang our hat on. The rest of the stuff, if we get it, it's gravy, it's upside, but we, we want to be able to hang our hat on, on some real value. Okay, how much damage has COVID done to your operations in terms of getting things done, getting data, moving forward? Uh, well, in the Toronto office, all of us have been working from home, but I would say we're probably, and you probably hear from a lot of companies, it's been seamless. We've been interact video, phone, every day, in touch with Mexico. Um, but in Mexico, we were actually one of the first companies that actually decided let's 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 stop the drills. So we stopped about three, four days before they made it mandatory to stop. That stopped April first, March thirty first to April first. It was a government uh, government decree, uh, and we took a lot of time to reinterpret data, run some internal mine plans, figure out where the next drills need to be. It was it was really really well spent time. And now June first. They opened up Mexico. Um, they declared expiration of mining an essential activity, and we've gotten cracking again. We're gonna, we're gonna go slow. We were at four drills before they stopped. We're starting with one. We'll add a second very shortly here, and we'll slowly ramp up back to four, uh, and maybe even more, uh, as the year progresses. Okay. And this this guy Eric Sprott that we keep hearing about, he splashes his money around because uh, he's got a lot of it. Um, but invariably, when he's like sticking a million bucks here, two million bucks here, we're not particularly paying too much attention to that because that's a bet for him. But he's got a lot of money in your business. He's a big shareholder now. Does he have a big say in your business? Uh, Eric has been an amazing shareholder since he came in uh, last summer. He owns about 24% now of the company. Um, but honestly, he's been very hands-off. He knows us from, from other other stories uh, other stories previous businesses he, he trusts us and likes us and uh and he's been very hands-off uh, he, he likes what we're doing we're we're, we're very open generally uh, we're at outlining our, our our plans and we've been hitting hitting and hitting and hitting. we just want to execute okay i mean marco day i mean i missed him last week actually when when i was talking with darren he had something far more important today so i, I missed him there but we'll <laughs> speak to him again sure shortly um Oxygen Group as part of this process. Again, I just want to see how this all this these moving parts fit together. So Oxygen Group, Mark, Marco Day, and, and the rest of the team um, have you know got mines into production. They, they seem to find financing quite easy, and they seem to have a good relationship with Eric Sprott, who seems to be across most of their their projects at the moment. Again, what's their involvement in your day to day? Are you just sitting in there as part of the portfolio, or are they active? How do they add value? Yeah. So um, Oxygen is is the uh, the founding shareholder, uh, uh, the founder and cornerstone shareholder of Discovery. It's again one of four active companies, as I mentioned, and and Mark is is you know principal at Oxygen, very involved the board at the board level, very involved. But the unique thing about Oxygen, as opposed to these other groups you've seen, where someone's a VP here and then a VP with another company, is each company has their own management team. Each company has their own board. Um, you know, when we're doing due diligence or thinking about strategy, a lot of a lot of ideas are shared um, that that you know that have worked for other companies. Um, also for marketing, it helps a lot. A lot of times we market together that we find that a, a really useful thing as well. But uh, you know each company operates on its own. Talk to me about the gold silver ratio. Are you page three of your presentation? You're you're saying silver a uh, laggard with talk, and you're trying to link it to gold. How do, just explain to me because I'm not a big silver guy. I've started to yeah. be, but I, I'm not a big silver guy, okay? And I see that ratio to conversation come up. But given silver is such a, you know, it's, it's a byproduct a lot of the times as well, right? In, in, yeah. in um, you know, lead, gold, copper, zinc, you know, so lots of different drivers there. So how do you, how do you value silver, given 
that you said you're trying to produce a project which doesn't doesn't worry too much about silver taking its time, you know, to in terms of you know appreciation. Was it 17 bucks today, right? So you're not so you know you're not that worried about it, are you? Listen, I uh, you know. <laughs> Some people even say CEOs shouldn't speculate on commodity prices or run their business based on those prices. I actually believe that we have to make a project that works now. Um, and, and, you know, I don't want to have six slides in my deck about, oh, silver is going to go to 30. I, I don't care. I'm making it work now. Um, but typically, you know, we've, we've started to do a little bit of work on, on, on knowing, uh, knowing silver and it, it's, uh, it's very volatile. You could probably argue that over the long, long, long term, gold is a better hedge. But in, in times like these, um, where there's money and credit flooding, um, gold and silver, they're, silver's money. Um, you know, it has industrial use too, but in times like this, when it's really, if you time it right, silver will outperform gold substantially. And it's done that in almost every precious metal cycle by huge margins. Same way on the way down. It, it, <laughs> It, it, it gets hit pretty hard too, um, but it's 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 uh, interesting to see that, uh, that that behavior. And listen, we might be at the right time here to capitalize on it. A lot of people think silver is going to go to 25, 30, 40. You know, I've heard crazy things. Um, uh, but it's we want to make a project <clears throat> again work for now, and uh, and we do have that leverage, right? Um, and that's a big reason Eric sent it. Eric loves silver. Uh, and there's not really anyone who's got the leverage when you go from 18 to 22 and then from 22 to 30 because not only do the, you make more margin per ounce, you, your resource gets way bigger, <laughs> double, triple, um, as you know. And even, as, even even either as silver goes up or as you start production, capital is paid off. Now, now the resource gets bigger. And one thing I didn't mention much is the geometry of the deposit is extremely favorable for a staged approach. So you're not sterilizing anything by doing this high grade quartz. What if you would have done naturally? And then as CapEx is paid off, you can make it larger and larger and larger. So, um, yeah, we're actually very, very fortunate that way. It was a big thing for us, a big item for us to tick the box is, yes, you can really apply a staged approach to this. Yeah, that's what I was asking at the, at the beginning. I just wondered, you know, how you plan to tackle this. And I, th I think there's nothing wrong with that plan at all. I'm just intrigued about the, what, how you were planning to do it. Um, so, so that's so thanks, thanks for giving 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 us that update. Um, with regards to where you and your investors make money, where are you taking this thing through to? Are you getting into? Are you going to be producing silver? When do you exit? We, you tell me. <laughs> we're at the early stages of this journey. Um, oh. We're funded. Basically, I could say we're effectively funded to construction. We've, we've got the cash to do it now. Um, but it's we've built mines before, um, all of us within the group. Uh, we've, got we've got resource development kind of background, production background, building background. Um, you know, we're not there yet, but if we have to, if we, you know, not have to, but if, if we get to that stage and we want to put this into production, we can do it. Um, but do you, listen, do a, a lot of to? investors. Do you want to? So, no. Okay. Listen, good. Because you've sold quite a few. You've sold quite a few, and that, you know you've made a lot of people a lot of money. And I'm just I'm just trying to work out for as a new investor coming in, what am I buying into here? So am I in for a long journey with you, or have you got a way to you know you've, you've kind of got a, a, a shorter term view or a view to quicker monetization? There's a few key catalysts. There's a few key kind of, you know, the, the classic value curve and the, the value gets added a lot on the resource and PA. That's when you really hit some very good value. And then it kind of stabilizes. As you know, and during construction moves a little sideways and then it shoots back up um, as you get near construction. So uh, one could argue the, the probably the best, most effective way and time to sell it is resource slash PA. Right. But, but 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 where's your head at? Clearly, I don't think I don't believe one second that that's where you would cash out. Where what's what are you good at? What what are you known for in terms of where you guys make money? I think um, I think exactly the stage we're at right now. Honestly, looking at the project again that has lots of data, that's already had lots of money spent on it, spending a bit more and showing. Look at this. This is a real world class project. And to be honest, the staged approach I talked to you about. 
we're talking something like 10,000 ton per day, maybe staging up to 20,000 ton per day, very digestible capex. Even at the 10,000 ton per day starter pit, this would be probably a, a top top five, top 10 silver mine in the world in terms of silver ounces produced, silver equivalent ounce it produced. So this, I strongly believe that, that this would definitely be something a, a mid-tier or major would be very interested in as, as we start showing it for what it really is worth. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, let's leave it, let's leave it there, uh, Tash. That's brilliant. Uh, nice first introduction. Um, I've like not heard the story before. Oh, we, we, we talked about it with some of the other guys in, in the Oxygen group, um, and obviously you, you've done a great job so far. Um, it be interesting to see what the next few months looks like, and hopefully you know, you, normal service re, re, um, resumes back down in Mexico soon, um, and you can, you can move things along at the pace that I know that you want to. So appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's just to leave to leave, um, you know, your listeners with us. Is, um, I kind of will ask much as that discovery is a very simple story. We have to execute, and we have been executing since we got everything we've said has been, we've been, we've been, uh, we've been uh, successful, and we hope to continue to do that. Beautiful. Thanks, Tosh.